My name is John Casanova, and um, the goal of this presentation is to show to you how uh, facial, rec uh, facial recognition technology can improve um, the travel experience. Thank you. Yeah, that's really helpful. Ooh. But first of all, let me talk a little bit about our company. Um, Futurize, it's a Finnish company. Our headquarter is in uh, Helsinki. We have sites in uh, London, Berlin, uh, Stockholm, and Munich. We are around 500 people, and we were founded in the year 2000. What do we do? Um, one of our core offering is pure software development, mobile integration into big landscapes. But we help our customers as well to discover and design new digital services. So design thinking, service design is a, is a big topic here. And a third pillar is we help our large corporate uh, companies um, to create a culture which is innovative and helps them to attract the best talent. Um, we have a broad range of um, customers from very big ones like BMW, Volkswagen, um, to uh, companies in the tourism industry like uh, U-Rings, for example, big hotel chains, and uh, many others. Um, Futurize has a vision. Uh, by 2023, we want to be kind of a leading partner in the definition of how machines and human beings will interact. This will change significantly. There will be new technologies. And of course, this whole topic, face recognition, nicely fits into this vision. And at this point, I would like to call my colleague, um, Tuckberg on stage because he will talk about um, a concrete example of how we used facial recognition to improve the um, traveling experience. Yeah. Uh, thanks, John, for the for the intro and uh, talking about the, the the vision. I think it's quite relevant to this case. So uh, face recognition. Whenever I talk about face recognition in these uh, gatherings, people always reminded of surveillance, CCTV cameras, security, governments, border controls, and to be honest, I can't blame them. That's the the most common applications we see nowadays. But we uh, at Futurist believe that there's so much more into it. You can actually use face recognition in hospitality services to personalize customer experience and uh, uh, provide zero user interface identification, basically proactively recognizing the, the uh, customer that you're serving and personalizing the journey. So it can go a long way enhancing the customer experience. But Let's talk about the, the airport case. So what is the, what is the need uh, for, the, for the... Yeah, perfect. So what is the case for face recognition at the airport? It's simple capacity issue. Like, IATA and ACI predict 7.5 billion people uh, will be traveling, uh, will be using air travel by the year 2036. And they don't simply have the capacity, they can't meet this demand. And they're at the limit of their physical expansion. They can't get bigger anymore, so they need to change their processes, right? And face recognition is useful in doing that. Face recognition is an intuitive technology. It enables uh, service providers to recognize you on the fly, just like we people do. Like you don't need to interact with any machine in order to get recognized by a face recognition system. So you just walk through the checkpoints. That's what uh, face recognition en enables. You can move from point A to B faster inside the airport. But how do you convince your customers? How do you convince passengers to take part in this? I know that Germany is a specifically sensitive country about privacy issues. So you need to uh, convince your passengers to take part in this. And Rachel Botsman argues that you need to have, for that kind of stuff, a trust leap to occur. What is a trust leap? It's basically convincing people to do something completely different than how they are used to doing it. 
And this is quite relevant for our case, because basically we're telling people to drop boarding passes, drop QR codes, and use face recognition, and just walk through without stopping anywhere at the airport. So what do you do, what do you need to do to have trust leap to occur? In our experience, there's two things that, that needs to be in place. Brand image and value proposition. Brand image is really important. Uh, we were lucky to work with Finair and Finavia, which are the two most important and uh, trusted companies in Finland. Uh, but we still needed the value proposition. At the end, for example, Nokia and Microsoft had a uh, brand image as well, but they couldn't convince us to drop Android or iOS and switch to the Windows operating system phones. So we needed a solid value proposition. How do you uh, create a winning experience? We take advice from a wise guy. He says that you need to start with the customer experience, the concept, and then walk your back towards making the technology, technology work. Uh, the funny, funny anecdote, uh, you know uh, Amazon Go, most of you guys know, and uh, the rumor has it that uh, the inspiration for that, uh, for Jeff Bezos, was, was uh, the shoplifters. So their interaction with the shops were so uh, convenient in a way, that they just rush in and rush out. He wanted to imitate that. So, Definitely, there is some inspiration for us, for the airport context as well. But one thing that I didn't agree with the Amazon Go experience was making the humans futile. I think bringing best of the bold worlds when it comes to emerging technology will give you the absolute best results that you want to, that you want to achieve. Face recognition especially will enable your employees to turn into helpers rather than controllers. Like take the... Um, uh, passport control, for example. It used to be so that it still is mostly, but now we have these automatic border controls. The regular one, the manual one, where you have this weird hierarchy that a person sits above you, there's a weird power balance that they check your passport every now and then they look into your eye and then it just, you don't know what to do. With uh, automated border control, that interaction completely changed. If you have ever used any of those, the passport control officers, now more of a helper role, actually trying to help you to use the machine in the best and fastest way possible. And we believe face recognition at all checkpoints have power to do that. So, case study, face recognition, proof of concept at the Helsinki airport. With the two sort of pillars or the mottos that we have in mind, the best customer experience and keeping humans in the process, we come up with that uh, the concept. An invisible, walk-based identification experience focusing on human interaction and convenience for the passengers. Why this? Because of course, when we had the case, we benchmark the available technologies out there. There's really brilliant companies who master the art of producing hardware and software combination, who make sure that face recognition technology works. But they ignored the customer experience completely. For example, they come up with this concept called face recognition kiosks. It's a kiosk that you use to enroll yourself to the system. It costs you 30,000 euros a piece, ballpark. It's an it's a engineering beauty, really. But then think yourself uh, as a freaking flyer, I am sure many of you are, you did your online check-in, you would right away go to security, right? You don't want to divert to any other location where you need to register yourself, and on top of it, you need to learn a new pattern of interaction with the machine. We never used face recognition kiosk before. So that was the first thing that we tackled. We thought that every one of us have these uh, really expensive and good quality apps in our uh, cameras, in our pockets. So let's use that to source images that is necessary for face recognition. So passengers, the selected passengers of Finnair, just took a selfie uh, at home, at the taxi when they were arriving to the airport, or at work, and they just come to the airport. No need to go elsewhere in the airport, you just go to the point that you want to go. And the second touch point, the check-in desk. So when we wanted to test this value proposition, because it was our idea, our concept, right? And we wanted to test with the customers if that this whole thing work. Uh, we dedicated a check-in desk. And you know how check-in desks are. There's like a, a sort of podium in front of it, a couple of meters usually. So we pointed a camera towards uh, in front of the dedicated check-in desk. And when passengers, the registered passengers, walk down the road, they were automatically recognized and their boarding pass uh, has been printed. 
So the result, how this approach, and uh, taking a concept to the customer and having the customer experience first uh, had a correspondence in the, in the customer's perspective. Yeah, so the customers really uh, liked it. They really liked the uh, concept of uh, having the convenience as the first thing when it comes to trying out new emerging technologies. We got like 4.6 out of 5. They trusted the companies behind uh, behind the technology, Finer, Finavi, Futurist, and we got all of the passengers who take part in this wanted to be part of this in the further test or in the full implementation. Here's a, a quick video explains uh, all. We are at the Helsinki airport. We're testing the face recognition technology. Passengers are asked to register themselves using the Android app we developed for this purpose. They are going to register three images of themselves, which is going to be turned to untraceable biometric IDs. And then they're going to walk down this way, end up in front of the check-in desk and have themselves recognized. So um, the passenger feedback was just uh, one side of it. I, I uh, told you that we uh, wanted to keep the human aspect in the place from the employee side as well. So employees also given uh, really good feedback. Uh, they were really impressed. They were really enthusiastic about the possibilities. And they come up with uh, ideas uh, themselves how to employ this technology so that they would work better. One more uh, important thing, actually. So you are dealing with uh, personal data, and uh, arguably the most personal data. So there's a term coined by uh, GDPR, uh, GDPR General Data Protection Regulation, which will come into force in May 25th this year, uh, privacy by design. So privacy by design, it's a concept and it requires a presentation in itself. But as a general rule of thumb, it's important to keep these principles in mind. Uh, you need to be really direct and explicit with your consent. So you need to tell uh, your customer how, why, when, how, ma how many times you're using the personal data. You need to anonymize and pseudonymize. Like if you don't need the actual personal data, then don't have it. Uh, for instance, in the face recognition case, this case that I told you, we didn't store any personal facial images. Our algorithm turned them into biometric IDs or vector maps. So it was quite, uh, it was completely an anonymous data. So if you looked at it, you couldn't tell who that biometric ID belonged to. Uh, use the data on the need-to-know basis. This is really important and interesting. Say um, at the airport case, um, if you're a passenger who's traveling once a year or five times a year, say, why would your personal data uh, should sit on the airport or the government's or the airline's database? You need to be in the control of your data and you should be able to send that data whenever you think it's necessary for them to have. Right to be forgotten, Make it easy for people to revoke their consent as easier as they have given it. And be transparent with all of these. So no dodgy stuff, direct and explicit communication. So face recognition has a great potential uh, in enhancing customer experience, whether it's a hotel, hospitality service, restaurant, bar, airport, airline. It will help you personalize your customer's experience. It will give your customers um, peace of mind it will give, give them uh, time savings, but you need to respect the personal data and privacy. This is all from my side. This is my Twitter handle and personal email address. Uh, any questions uh, would be happy to answer. And uh, John, our MD, uh, Germany, is here to answer any questions as well. Thank you very much. OK. Wonderful. Does uh, anybody have any questions uh, regarding this? Any questions? Facial recognition? Everybody's okay with it? <laughs> okay then. Well, thank you very much. Give them a nice round of applause. Thank you.